really that really does make me happy. That song really does make me it's happy. It's gonna be alright. Oh no, I haven't heard that song that much. That Bob Marley song? What do you wanna talk about? What's been on your mind lately? What's been on my mind lately? It doesn't mean that a lot of commitment. What do you mean? <laughs> like, how, um, you know, the only way you can actually achieve something is if you see it through. And so we always say, like, you know, like, make this goal and make it practical. But um, most of the time, you know, opposition reveals the fact that we're not committed to anything. Like, the moment something is hard, the moment something is, uh, they didn't go the way we expected and we give up. And it's like, you know, it's like, you know, like, make some changes in your life, changes to the world, right? Um, you gotta really be committed for the long run, right? But it's gonna require you, like, the best and the worst of you, like, to be there, yeah. always, present, going, never stopping. Okay, I can feel that. You mean, like, in the sense, like... I, I mean, in every sense, like, 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 whether you talk about, like, relationships, like, you know, we see, uh, like, a high, high levels of marriage, marriage and to be divorced, and it's because people are not committed to each other. They were committed to to what they thought marriage was about, mm -hmm. right? but the realization is like you make a commitment that big, or you make a commitment to people, you make a commitment to God, you make a commitment to whatever it is. So you gotta understand that it is not gonna be what you thought it was. Like the same thing with having kids, people are committed to the idea of having a kid, but they don't understand. Like you don't understand what you're gonna go through when the kid turns sixteen, when the kid goes to yeah, yeah. eighteen. It's like um not not really like okay. So basically, what you said is like. And like knowing like or staying focused on that idea, right? Like like, like, like you like the idea of a relationship. Yeah, or so it's like you gotta understand that yo, you're so committed to you said you were committed to this to make sure you're committed uh, all, the way. all the way. Like every moment in your life, remind yourself why you're committed in the first place. What do you feel in your life right now has made you think about that? Like what what like, is it like, like what's in your life now? Uh it's never like the lady of uh, leaving a legacy. Mm -hmm. You know, a legacy that matters. So the only way you can be certain that you're leaving something that will last it's just that you were committed to that goal every day. Like, yeah. doing the small things to make sure that when you're not here any longer, there's a platform left for somebody else yeah. to stand on, you know? They may not acknowledge the fact that it was you, and that's okay, because you're not looking for the recognition, but you're just looking to make something that will stand there, that will offer people a platform to grow, to to do, achieve something you couldn't, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so they don't have to start from zero. And I think that the only way you can see that in any situation is if you remain rooted, if you remain planted, if you keep going, you know, if you keep... And it has to be only like through a real commitment. Like, yo, saying commitment is not what I feel. Like, even when I don't feel it, even when I don't want to, I made a decision. That That's a real, like, mature uh, aspect of life is saying, you know, there's a lot of times you, you don't want to feel like you want to you wanna be married. You know, there's a lot of times you don't want to feel like you want to have kids. There's a lot of times yeah. you don't want to feel like you want to go to work. But you don't give yourself an option. You mm -hmm. say, yo, I, you know, the reason I feel like as young adults and young people, and people in general lately, we're not committed to anything is because there are too many options. Yeah, so it's so, so it's, easy yeah. to walk away from something. Yeah, you know, I was um, I was having this conversation yesterday, um, with Julian. He was telling me like about how he was kind of like upset in a way because he's like interning at a place that he didn't want to intern at, and and you know like uh, that was something that I was like, I was like, but you know, like, obviously we got to the root of why he was upset, but I think you know in broadness, you know we kind of look at things like if we're expecting something out of life and we don't get it like that, we automatically get like, it's almost like we get shook enough, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, oh, this didn't go as planned, I don't know what to, what, yeah. what to, you get me? Yeah, and like we have these big ideas of how life are supposed to turn out. Yeah. And at the end, when they don't, it's like we don't know how to write. Yeah, which, which I know, you know, at the end of the day, that's actually very interesting because it's so true, like, I feel like that happens a lot with, like, when you get out of high school and you kind of like, I feel like it has to be you know, one or two things, you either know what you want to do or you're just saying what you want to do you know what I mean I just have an answer yeah. at, least, at least from my perspective I mean you might be like the the other part like the third part just like oh I don't know what I want to do right but like that that really does happen a lot in life that you know I guess people don't really sit down and really think things through mm -hmm. you know what I mean and I like that you said the idea because I think a lot of people are fond of the idea of a baby fond of the idea of a marriage you know, fond of the idea of a big house and a, and a nice car, but you don't focus on the details that goes behind that. Mm -hmm. you know, if you don't keep that nice house, how hard, how much more harder do you yeah. have to work? How much more time are you sacrificing uh, for you to, you know, have that child? How much time are you sacrificing? How much time are you not even mm -hmm. going to ever get for yourself for mm -hmm. a yeah. long time? So it happens just in life in general. I feel like when you get out of high school, for example, or when you get out of college, 
you don't really think things through. Like you think like you know, I'm gonna go through college. I'm gonna work hard. I'm gonna get my degree, mm-hmm. and life is gonna be a breeze from there. Yeah, yeah, it's like I'm gonna a degree. I'm gonna go straight into what I wanna do. And... Yeah, and then I think that that's just it though. Like, you know, it's a lot of figuring out. You get me? Like I think we forget that that then like it's this is life. You yeah. Get me? Like, like we have a life to live. We're so focused on like the goals that we have in front of us that we kind of forget like that that this is like like in the, I I guess the, the the thing that's hard to explain about that is life itself like like you know we we now live in a modern day where we have to work right like to have a living yeah. as far as buying food and shelter yeah. and stuff like that right but I always think about things like before like what were people doing before all of this modern stuff you get me like people were I I feel like people were probably enjoying their lives more you get me as far as like what they what they chose to do with their time well if you were wealthy baby well this is what i mean by before before modern civilization right what were you actually doing you were literally well you were in survival mode mode, right as far as like what we need to live and what we need to eat you get me but when you weren't looking for food and you weren't looking for shelter because you had it at the moment what were you doing with that time? Well, remember, uh, the bottom is, that brings around the question of, like, you know, sedentary people, people who, who just actually settled down, people who roamed, right? Most mm-hmm. people roamed. So, the reason, you know, cities and civilizations happen is because people decided to settle down and then mm-hmm. that creates development. But before that, you were constantly on the move. So, life was not about having fun. Life was about finding your next meal. Right. I mean... I look at it like this. If you ever see the movie The Crew, right? Yeah. Uh, if you, you saw that movie before? Uh, I know what it is. I so it's like a it. Disney movie about like cave, like, yeah. like in that time, you know what I mean? Like the primitive time in, in, in life. And they, so the dad had this thing where all we did was, you know, sleep. We, we hunted for food and we ate, but we always stayed in the cave. You know what I mean? Always stayed in the cave. Yeah. No matter what happened, we always stayed in the cave. The only time we went out was for food, right? And and in the movie, um, there's a part where the girl, she has this very curious personality, mm-hmm. this very outgoing personality. She dreams about what's more than the cave, what's out there, you know what I mean? Yeah. So one night she ends up going out there and there's like, because um, she's like, I believe it was like this flame-like thing, and she meets this kid who's adventurous, and he's trying to like, get to the end of the world because at the end of the world you get to ride along the sun or something like that right so basically you know the way she lived her life was in captivity it was yeah. do this this and this get me and, and there was nothing else to life but that but in the midst of you know this survival mode and this craziness this kid was chasing a dream something that he sought out something mm-hmm. that he believed in so much that people probably thought he was crazy for but he still went ahead and he chased yeah. it and and through his journey of chasing that he finds himself you know and and, and along with the family after like you know they finally kind of get to move him because he convinced them to he kind of like you know you start to experience new things things that you might not always know how to handle but in the midst of it you just do you just live life and you do it and, yeah. and i think that 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 sends a message if you're really paying attention that that's what i mean by yeah, you might have been in survival mode, but you always choose to live your life. Like right now, in modern time, you're always in survival mode. I feel like people are constantly in survival mode. They just don't realize it. That means that when you're at work, right, running those spreadsheets that you don't want to run, answering the people you don't want to answer to, you're doing a job that you don't love. And you're spending 40 hours of your entire week doing things that you don't want to do. You know what I mean? Things that that don't make you happy. You're doing it because you get a paycheck, and because of that paycheck, you can then go into this, what we call survival mode, you get me? For us, survival mode isn't finding a shelter and food, you get me? Because we, ha- we, we, we have this thing now where we have this, no matter what, right? Like even the poorest of people have food and shelter to some extent, you get me? Whether it be through government assistance mm-hmm. or whatever, you have that to some extent. So it's almost something that isn't like back then, you get me? But now our survival mode is, what are we going to do for recreational fun? Like, you know, can we go out? Can we afford this car? Can we do this? That's what we kind of start to look at. So that's what I mean by, you know, we're we're in love with an idea of something. And we spend our lives in love with an idea of something. But how often do we spend our time just loving where we are now? And yeah. where we could really 
you know, reach out, really expand, really explore, mm. to get to know ourselves better, to get to know the world better, the people around us better, instead of all of these material things, and all these things that, you know, we, we tend to work so hard for it and never truly capture. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like even you, you know, being in love with this baby in your mind is still something like that's materialistic yeah. because you're in love with the idea. But once you get beyond the idea and you start like reasoning with yourself why you want, you know, because I, I want to be able to motivate somebody. I want to be able to lead somebody. I want to learn from this mm -hmm. person. You get me? I want this person to teach me a new part of life that I would never learn otherwise I gave birth to you. You get me? Like yeah. these new things that, that, you know, like things that really matter in life. You get me? Mm -hmm. Like most of our jobs that we do, most of the things that we that we waste our time on don't make us better people. No. You know what I mean? They, yeah. they're, they're just things that we do because it's a mold that we're decided to live. And the minute that we break out of that mold, we're looked at as bad. You know what I mean? Like it's it's like um the moment you say, I don't want to go to college. I want to start my own like thing. Like outsiders. You, you look at it as like, oh my God, like, are you sure? Are you sure? And, and if you don't make it, people are going to be like, I told you so. But when you make it, people are going to be like, damn, like you took that risk. You know what I mean? So it's, it, I think that there's just different levels to these things. I think that everything starts with just like your mindset. Like what, what, you're, what you're sitting down and thinking about. Yeah. You know what well, I mean? yeah, I mean, I think your thoughts are indicative of your of your path right like how you think is how you see things because uh some people will see uh you know the whole idea of uh, a setback for a major comeback right but some yeah. other people will say no no i failed that's it yeah that's it you no know, it's like you know you gotta understand like your mindset will direct your heart your heart will direct your passions will also direct your steps you know what you choose to think about what, how you choose to th see things that can transform how you act how you interact how you approach, right? Because uh, one of the things that we need to understand is just because we've always done something a certain way doesn't mean it's the right way or right. it's the best way. And so, you know, the whole idea of because people have always gone to college and people have always done, you know, high school and this and this and this, it doesn't mean that it's the best way for everybody, mm -hmm. right? It's, just, it's that mold that not everybody fits. Yeah. And if you don't fit it, that's fine, yeah. you know? And if you do end up fitting it, and then you find out that you don't enjoy it, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. I think the idea has to be, uh, you know, that we understand. You said it. It's like life happens, and the journey itself is the point of life. I, I think it's happiness. Yeah, I think the journey. I think you know, in the journey, because there's a uh, at least my, bit, my point. There's a beauty to to pain. Yeah. And there's a beauty to struggling. Mm -hmm. and there's a beauty to suffering, mm -hmm. right? Like there's a beauty to it. So I don't think the idea is happening. I think the idea is. It, it's just the journey itself, like learning to live every day because like you're last and living out to live something that will last beyond you. That's why I hold my sense. Yeah. It has to be like a legacy. Like, like the impact I leave has to be more important than anything else I could have done, yeah. right? Because it wasn't the fact that I, I you know, because if you're so committed to making an impact, then your decisions are altered in that. You don't want to just walk around aimlessly in your life, or just kind of waste your time. You kind mm -hmm. of you want to be intentional about the interactions yeah. you have and the conversations you have, because at the end you're thinking, you know, I'm here for the long run. Like I'm thinking about, you know, what's gonna happen when I'm not here anymore, mm -hmm. right? And, and that also develops you certain leadership. I, I realize that, you know, leading something is not one of the hardest things you can do, because we think we're leading, but in reality we, we're just handling everything ourselves, yeah. right? And because we have everything, we think we're in charge. No, no, leadership is, is something that enables people to be the best them too, right? And so that's the point of legacy. It's like, you know, I left the platform so people can be the best them. Mm -hmm. I left that at a, at a concept, an idea, a thought, an imagination. Like the whole, like this thing. And this thing landed this idea in his head, but he could have never imagined what would have become today. But he, he left a platform for people, you know, Steve Jobs and Apple. Like, so I think like, the biggest visionaries are people who saw what the world could be and they realized that maybe it wasn't going to be there in their time. But they wanted to push the word in that direction. They wanted to push uh, people in that direction. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's the big thing. So when you're thinking about like the big picture of how you can impact the world, mm -hmm. then you know you find... Because for me, happiness, I think, is momentary. Like, you have moments of happiness. But I think like fulfillment, like real fulfillment, mm -hmm. real purpose, is found in thinking, like, how can I make something better for people that will... Uh, it's, uh, people that maybe would have never thought about me, will never remember me, yeah. but just... In some way or another, I, I made it different or better. You know, I, I think that's a good point that you said there. That, that happiness is like a moment thing because, like, thinking about it now, it's true. I think that happiness is the first thing we should think about in our journey. Yeah. You get me? Like, 
what what makes you happy, right? And and in that in that thought, whatever you decide, it's what's gonna grow the most passion for you to do something. I, I feel like you know a lot of people they inspire unintentionally. You get me? Like some people just live their lives and they don't even realize how inspirational. You get me? Yeah. They really are to other people because you know it's a hard thing for you to say no to the mold. I feel like the mold is is something that is is like judged that by people. You know what I mean? Like if you're a successful person within your family and friends, mm-hmm. like you've made it. But what if you're not happy in what you do? You get me? Yeah. Like do you stay with the success? You know, like people being proud of you, but you're not truly fulfilled. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I feel like a lot of people chase that that like that that sense of belonging that people yeah. feel like, yo, I'm so happy yeah. for you. You get me? I think that, you know, when you see somebody that, that says, you know what, I'm going to do what makes me happy, right? And what made them happy was to write. And because through their writing, their experiences or whatever, yeah. they were able to inspire other people and yeah. help other people chase their happiness. Of course, yeah. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, it. a lot of people, I feel like they tend to write along the side of, I need to do something where I have a job. So I can live at this, like yeah, a, at this security. Space. Yeah, exactly. So I can live in this kind of space. You get me? I can drive this kind of car, have this kind of house, and you know, and I'm gonna be good because we find that happiness, that joy in those things. Yeah. You get me? It's like once I have this, this thing that I've that I've been thinking about for such a long time, like this view in this house and this feeling in this car, then I'm gonna be happy. Yeah. You get me? Once I have. You know, when I wake up next to, you know, the woman of, of my dreams, then that's when I'm going to be happy. And, you know, like, I think that we just have all of these thoughts that we think are going to be happy. And like you said, happiness is a feeling. I read this quote once that said, you know, we shouldn't chase happiness. We should be happy just chasing. And I was like, well, and the quote was more paraphrasing. Yeah. You know, made me think about that. That's so true. Like, you know, we, we have the choice, right, to be happy. We have the choice yeah. to bring our energy up. We have the choice to... You know, do the things that that we really like, and, and you get me. So I think that you know, if we're in a, in a place right now in our lives where we know, like, for example, like me, I know that I can't be like in corporate America forever. I know because I'm just not happy. You yeah. get me? Like I'm, I'm not genuinely like, oh, this is what I love to do. You get me? Like I know I can't, but I know that for the moment, um, that's where I need to be so that I can grow as a yeah. person. I can learn. You get me? And then I can. You know, flourish and yeah, go out into other shoes. Else you want. But wherever I get at, you know, my success won't be um, in numbers. You know I mean, they won't be in how much money yeah. I make a year. It won't be in the nice car that I drive. It won't be in that. You know I mean, the, I feel like for me, my success is going to be in how happy I am as a human being. How am I representing myself and inspiring others to do the same yeah. thing at the end of the day? You know what I'm saying? Because I think that one thing you always say is that you want to leave a platform for people. And I think that. That in itself is the greatest thing a man or a woman could do for Earth. Period. Yeah. You get me? Like, leave a platform for other people that feel just like you, and that you you know put in the work and stuff. It could be a little bit easier for yeah. them, and then they leave us. It could be a little bit yeah. easier for the other person. That's just that, that's just how that ladder yeah. moves. Yeah, because and I think that the beauty of that is that it's, it's I know it sounds good. And we say it all the time, but it's actually countercultural. Mm-hmm. Because that is you willing to say. You know what? I, I'm okay with being the stepping stone. Yeah. I'm okay with somebody stepping on my shoulders, yeah. on my labor, on my hard work, mm-hmm. and they might reap the benefits that I did it. But I'm okay with that because yeah. that was for me. That's what I wanted. I wanted to set up a future for somebody. You know, when you say that, that is crazy reality because you don't understand the magnitude of that. That you know, like if you really thrive, right, you succeed, and you actually, whether financially or inspirationally, you you set up a platform for somebody. You don't know who you're gonna influence, and mm-hmm. like, you don't know how you're gonna alter the game for somebody. Like, like the whole idea of, uh, I don't know, I, 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 like as athletes when they they hold out for a new contract, like the first person who did that changed that game for the rest of everybody else. Mm-hmm. When they hold, when they were like, you know what, I'm, I'm not gonna play until you guys change my my my, my contract. Yeah, you know, it's like oh snap, you're still standing. You like, know, like the first, like Stephen Curry with two hundred million dollars. Mm-hmm. The first guy to win two hundred million dollars, he changed the, the game. Yeah. You know, this guy, you know, and it's like, you know, but that's a different aspect, but I mean, even that's what sacrif- oh, like sacrifice, you know, a it's a concept of, of putting yourself like as the first person to do what nobody else has done, mm-hmm. to go where nobody else would go, you know, so somebody else after you, it doesn't have to be like, 
Yeah, I wonder if I wonder if no, 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 somebody did it. So you go farther than that person. Yeah. Because then by you doing going farther than the person, you are making their sacrifice matter even more. Because mm -hmm. the, the worst thing we can do is mm -hmm. is like let it, our lives, for example. Like, the worst thing I could do is is fail. Is by throwing away my life and ignoring all the sacrifices my parents did for me. Yeah, exactly. You get me? So it's like, yo, now you do something that will that will make them proud and make you proud and say, you know what, their sacrifices was in your vein. Yeah. And I don't say like a career because that's that's like a big thing. I mean like that like you go and pour it to people. Like your parents poured it to you and gave it off for you, you know, like you pour it to people. And then you pour it to your friends, you pour it to the people around you and you're intentional in your relationships and you're intentional yeah. on the words you pick and stuff like that. And, and that that's our shifting, you know. And people different things because they become intentional too. Mm -hmm. And so that was like, it's not just like a one thing, it's like a, everybody wants to be more intentional, more dedicated, more yeah, focused, yeah, yeah. more driven. And so you start changing, like you start seeing culture change. Yeah, and then that's that's something that's I think is hard to do. But I think that you know, with the platform that we're given, like in today's age, right, with all like this social media stuff, it's it's to me it's crazy because you know, we said it before for like like social media, it exposes, yeah, right. I, um, I tweeted earlier is like exposure exposure and exposing is the social media game right and, and the meaning is that you're exposed to and maybe not so much exposed I guess because you haven't experienced yeah. it but you watching it gives you an idea yeah, right? you. of you know so much going on because social media is everywhere you know something that's happening in Dubai you're watching it on your mm -hmm. screen that you will probably never have watched you get me if that platform wasn't there but then it's also exposing who you are. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, you know, who you portray to be, who you really are, are all one thing. If you're portraying to be something, that is who you are. Yeah. You get me? It's exposing who you are as a person. You get me? You're portraying, you're being fake or whatever. You get me? It's really exposing how you are as a person regardless of what you're trying to show yeah. off. You get me? Yeah, platforms expose your true character. Exactly. Always. At the end of the day, like we know the truth. You get me? Like, we may think something, you may have people fooled, but the truth always comes out. So I think that, you know, with that, it's something that's crazy that happens. That's like, you know, you have this platform where, you know, you're going to get pure honesty anyways. Mm -hmm. like, even if people are trying to fake it, it's only a matter of time before somebody realizes yeah, eh, you can't keep up with that. Yeah, you're not gonna always keep up with like you know this fake look and stuff like that. You get me? Because you know like I understand like you know we see it like yo in social media the couples they look great. You get me? It looks awesome. You constantly post a picture or whatever, but then you know behind the scenes shit's just looking bad. But the thing is that at the end of the day that's what exactly. that's what it is. Like people in your life they know that. Man, you're posting, but we know what's really going on. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean by it exposes you. And you know I think that's the beauty of actually being open about your struggles. Is that you have people showing you support rather than bashing you when things go downhill because you always pretend that everything was fine. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So instead of calling you a hypocrite, they, they, they encourage you to continue fighting. Yeah. So I think that's one of the... It's like we need to understand, it's like, yo, it's okay to lead from a place of weakness. Like... You don't have to be the strongest to lead. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be the strongest on social media, the funniest, or the always happy. Like there's days that you can say, "Hey, sorry guys, I'm not feeling it." You know, yeah. like you know, I know, I know some people have like a like a thing in social media. Like, that's what they do, like that. Yeah. Like, I don't talk to uh, with animals or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so that's that's the thing. Mm -hmm. So I understand why they have to keep that there. But it's like you know, when we keep up this this, I guess fake personas, mm -hmm. it's like it's not gonna last long. No, it's not. I mean. And at, at, at the end of the day, you know, it's 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 all about, like you said, the platform. You no, know, just building. I think that, you know, when you really want to build something, you want to reach something, you need to use all the platforms that you can because you don't know who you're going to reach on that platform. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even if you reach one person on that platform, you know, you converted one person on that platform, that person go ahead and tell their other friend, yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? And, and you start to start to create this movement, you know, on something that you believed in, something that people initially said... I don't know if you should yeah. do that. I think you should probably, you know, just go to school and be a doctor. You get me? Go to, you know, or do this or do that. Exactly. You know, it's everything's different. So, I mean, I think that that's so important, man, that we just kind of like, I guess, start thinking about really like, what is it in our lives that makes us happy, but really stop to think about it. Because I think that, you know, you ask somebody off the bat, they're going to give you just answers. You get me? Like, like you know, oh, what is that you want out of life? It's like a nice house, would be dope, you know. Then, yeah. Those are answers that really weren't like I, you know, like I know you didn't sit down and really think about like, well, what do I want? Like, what makes me happy? What 
what make what brings joy to me what can bring joy to others you get me like those kind of things i feel like that's what kind of makes everybody different in the sense yeah. you know what i mean which is like it's crazy to think that a lot of people aren't really doing that at all you get me like a lot of people right now are living their lives doing things that they don't want to do you get me? like like honestly saying. like the, you like i just realized i just worked Yo, they will die time? doing things they don't want to do. Yeah, and th- think about how much time you spend working on things that mean nothing. Like honestly, like they don't mean. Like think about it. Like, when they ask you, you know, like when you go out somewhere and they ask you, "Oh, what do you do?" And then you tell them your job description. It's like, okay, like, cool. Like, like yeah. no, notice that like, you don't really get too many questions based on like, oh, what was that? You know, like yeah. you know I mean, like now if you go out, and you're like, oh, I'm a philanthropist. It's like, it's like what? Like, Okay, well, if you don't know what a philanthropist is, you're yeah. going to be like, oh, what's that? And then you tell them, oh, yeah, a philanthropist, you know. Like, what, what are you into? What are you diving into? Exactly. And then, you know, you get asked more things when it's something that's out of the box, exciting. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know, oh, I uh, I don't know, I own a company for this. It's like, oh, what's that? You know I mean? Like, it's, it brings in, it's more intriguing, you know what I mean, than to say, oh, I work for a company. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, or, oh, I work for, I don't know, like, customer service. So it's like, like, okay, cool. Like, you know, it's not nothing like... Like that, that, that somebody really wants to dive into because it's almost like a, it's like it's like a miscellaneous mm-hmm. job to what the big picture of yeah. that whole thing is. You get me? So I think that that's that's, that's the number one thing. Like, kind of just I always think about it like this. Like that's what kind of what I'm down represents in in a sense. You get me? And what I mean by that is just it's just that that everybody needs to have a conversation about everything. You get me? Yeah. Like no matter what, I find it that there's certain people I talk to that aren't open to certain conversations. You get me? Like, because either they haven't gave it thought or because they're just not interested in it. You get me? Yeah, what type of conversations? Like anything. Like you could like you could talk like I, I know there's people around that don't necessarily like to talk about life. You get me? Like just life in itself. Yeah. Like really start talking about like you know, like somebody might be like like for example like the example you gave earlier, right? Like having a baby you're getting married, right? Like I could talk to somebody and they might not want to have that conversation about like why they want to get married. They're like, oh, I just want to get married just just because like it's like a thing to do. And like, they don't yeah, want to be challenged. Yeah, exactly. Like, they don't want to be challenged in that thought process. So like you know, the, I feel like those people that I meet that are like that are people that just kind of just going with the flow. You know what I mean, they're not trying to stand out. They're just uh, trying as to it be. Comes, yeah. yeah, like you know, I'm gonna just take life as it comes. I'm gonna just flow yeah. through and. That that life is that life. You know, because no, like, no. like if you if you really want kids and you really want to school, nobody bashing that. But I, I think you know, like it needs to be so refreshing in everybody. Like you just take a moment, you ponder, you think, you discuss, you conversate. It's like why do I want it? Like you know, because if not, if you go through the motions, there's gonna be a point in your life you're gonna snap, you're gonna lose it. You know, whether you have a meltdown at work or whether you go through a midlife crisis or whatever it is, it's like you're gonna snap. Because you never took a moment to just breathe. You just kept going with it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Like, I guess some people don't really think about the fact that you literally only live once. Like, literally, right? Like, you do only live once. So yeah. it's like... So it's like you can't throw it away. Yeah, it's you almost like... You to. Yeah, like, well, you know, why are you doing things that you don't want to do? You yeah. I mean? Like, like, for what? Like, some people just to own the craziest things. Because if you think about it, at the end of the day, like, work comes down to money. Yeah. Get me? So people do jobs. A lot of jobs that people do come down money, to money. money. Exactly. And this money is you know, you don't get money, you just leave it under your mattress. So this money is for money. exactly. So put it on things. Like, you know, I know you said this earlier, like we don't really want money. We just want the things yeah. money can buy. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, we don't really want no, money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like money, all all it does is you can buy things and it gives you some kind of security. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But you don't really want money. Like, imagine if you get a humongous pile of cash, right? There's an entire couch full of $100 bills, and they're all worthless. Like, they can't buy nothing. Yeah, you don't want it. You don't want it. What do you want all this paper for? Exactly. You know I mean? So, at the end, like, we, I feel like we're doing too many things that we don't want to do to impress people we have no business impressing. That's, that's how I feel, like, why we want these nice things. Because once you have these nice things, cool. You get to enjoy them for a while, but they become dull to you after a while. You get know I me? Mean? And I know this from, like, the smallest, like, luxuries in life. You get know I me? Mean? Yeah, you start like, wanting the next thing. Yeah, you just want the next thing. So, I mean... I mean, yeah, I, I mean, because the end, you got to understand, a human soul is never truly satisfied in things. Bless you. It's never really, just very satisfied in things. It's, it's like, 
That pursuit, the pursuit of the fame, will always leave you empty. It will always leave you wanting something else, something more. Like there has to be in your life a desire for something that's real. That it, that is not just you know fading. Does not have another model. Yeah. Like oh, when's the next model coming? Yeah, there was the next thing that's yeah. gonna pop up. It's like no, something like that is there. Yeah, man. That's why people is one of is, are like one of the biggest things is that you can't have another George. Like you can't have another Jenny. You can't have another Fatima. This is who it is. Yeah. So make sure that you value those people as they come. You know, weaknesses at all. You know, not not weaknesses at all because that's the beauty of if, if, like really pouring out into people and investing in people. Like investing money is dope. But investing into people, that's the payout for the long run. Yeah. Because they'll remember, even if they may not quote you, they remember the things you taught them, the things you did for them. You know, uh, when Angelo says, people might not remember what you told them, but they'll remember how you made them feel. And that's impactful. Like, you know, hey, you know what? Somebody believed in me once, or somebody encouraged me once, somebody didn't give up on me once, you know? Mm -hmm. Somebody helped me get up again. And when you do that, you know, you, you don't know who you're going to be helping. You don't know who you're going to be influencing. But it, it might just be a trickle down effect. Mm -hmm. No, that's very impressive. I like that. So I mean, yeah, man. I think I think that was very well said. That was very well like started too because uh, that's something I've kind of like I've always gave thought to like in more recent times. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something people need to start giving more thought to. You get me to like to how they make people feel towards what they want to do in life. Because at the end of the day, man, like I always say, right, like. Like I told you before, like, you know, it's, you gotta worry more about your funeral. Yeah. You know? Worry about how many people are going to attend. Like, if you're going to die today, who's coming to your funeral? Your mom, your dad, your sister, a few friends, the whole block, the whole neighborhood. Yeah. You get me? The entire city. Like, who's coming to your funeral? Yeah. You get me? Like, the, the people that you impacted the most. If you made a million people cry and made them feel something and, and with those tears they moved and they started their own thing those people are going to come you know what I mean if they can and they're going to come and, find know, way, exactly, yeah. and do that do that support so I think that that's important man that we kind of start to like really think about it and start having those discussions because dude, the, I, fi I find like the more I talk with you and the more I I just have these conversations the more my mind opens up to see things how you see them it gives me an opportunity to see you know, depending on who I'm having conversation with to see through their lens, you get me? And just having dialogue yeah. continuously. Like you to really be able to empathize with people. Exactly. It, 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 it opens up my mind a lot more. It helps me to think mm. about my own life and the things that I want to achieve. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think that, that that's very important to do. I think that, you know, like, if you're spending a lot of time talking about, like, you know, like what the Kardashians did on the last episode and... You know, you're spending too much time talking about things that aren't going to make you better around the people. You, know, you just need to find better conversation. Start better conversations. Yeah. You get me to really challenge your minds to start thinking. Start asking about why. I think it's like, you know, when it tells me, like, I don't know how to start better conversation. I ask why. Yeah. Why is one of those things I feel like annoys people the most? Yeah, because it's it's like, the reality of things. Yeah, it's like. Oh, I didn't really think about why. You know, I just, I just, this is the thing. So, yeah, it's, it's very true. It's like, this is what it is. Not about why. You know, because I don't understand as, as grown ups, we lost that wonder. Mm -hmm. As kids, that's all we ask. Mm -hmm. But what are you doing? This is this, this. Why? But no, because I have to do this. But why? But why? But because there's always a wonder into, like, why are we doing what we do? And as, as grown ups, it's like, we just fall into the world and we forget to ask. Yeah, we start to like, just, we start to all go left. You know what I mean? We yeah. all go, start going right to where everybody's like, going. So it's like, okay, I guess, whatever. I just follow. You know and then I mean? you see somebody say, why, why don't we go left? Right. I mean, sorry, we don't do that here. But, but why? No, no, it's not that things are good here. Very true. Very true. No, it's true. It, even it's like, true. even the faith walk. Like, you know, one of the biggest things that we should always be asking God is why? Mm -hmm. It's like if we believe God is that big, then don't get offended. He won't get offended when you ask why God. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, but it's like we feel like we can't question our pastors. We can't question our leaders. Yeah. You know, we can't question, you know, certain things in the Bible. Like, why? Mm -hmm. Why? Why? I guarantee you guys are going to give you an answer. Yeah. You know? And maybe humanly we don't have an answer. But that doesn't mean guys are going to be offended. But we get offended if you question why. Oh, question. That's how we yeah. say this. It's, it's like, very why? It's very true. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, like I said before, it, I think it's just because of that. I think we just fall into that, that 
that this is falling the crowd. I guess this is what everybody's doing. I mean, we're not asking. Her. It has always been done. It's always always been done. But why? Yeah, man. I think at the end, yeah, it's, it, when it when it comes down to it, that's just it. Like we're not we're not asking the right questions. We're just trying to find like that easy way. Yeah. Fuck it. Just follow what everybody else is doing. I was good though, man. So with that being said, did you know we're recording the whole time? No. Yeah, we've been recording the whole time. For real? Yeah. <laughs> So with that being said, people, he had no idea we were recording. <laughs> so my mission today is Are you are you like playing with me or like I mean so safe? Bro. Oh, it's actually recording. This whole time. I thought you were like, ah, let's record that for real. No, this whole time we've been recording. <laughs> I, yes, no. I wanted to inspire the most naturalist uh conversation right now because I'm not gonna lie, I've been feeling down right now. Like just coming from so we we just went out. It's and hot, yeah, it's man. my heart. It drags you. I know. This guy fell asleep. I know his his energy was low. I pick mine up in the car and with the music, but yeah, man, just one of those when the sun's going down like this, I just feel so depressed, man. It's like <laughs> Jesus, but it's like around five to seven. Like, it's like that time sucks, man. Yeah. It just sucks being outside. All right, people. So thank you guys once again for tuning in to I'm Down. We are beyond blessed for you guys making this channel a success. And the reason why I say it's success is because just because one of you views. Just one of you views you like has already it. made yeah. us as successful as we could possibly imagine. Thank you so much. Um, it's beyond humbling, you know, to see. Even in our last video, I had a girl. Um, she messaged me saying that somebody messaged her, asking, like something about you know the financial things that we're talking about. Some of the financial things that we're uh -huh. talking about. And that uh, they were wondering, like, you know, well, where can I find this 12%? You know, like, I don't want to ask them because I don't know them. You know what I'm saying? That's but, dope. Which yeah, is, reach out. Yeah, but, yeah, of course, the comment below, uh, DM us, to, you know, at I'm down underscore TV and any social media platform. We'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Don't feel shy because, you know, you don't know us. You know, we're here to for open conversation, period. And, nice. yeah, man, so, like I said, man, you guys have made, to me, and I'm sure to Chris, I've made this channel a huge success, period. You know, it's not about having a million subscribers and a million likes and all that stuff. Just because somebody watches and somebody asks a question, you're engaging with us. And I would do, really do it at the end of the day, just having a conversation. And we're just putting it out there. Yeah. You get me? Essentially, you get me? Even though we have an intro that's fancy and all of that stuff, you know, it's so we could, you know, be able to provide the best catch for your eye. So that you can actually, like, be like okay, you know, let me check this out. You get me? Because at the end of the day... You know, like attracts. Yeah, it is it, how is how people always constantly say like you know I hate how when I'm on YouTube and it's like this guy in the commercial showing me his Lamborghini, his Ferrari, and his big house. You know, it's like talking about money and, and at the end of the day, those things to me is rather annoying to this point, but it's true. That's how they catch your attention. You yeah. Know what I mean? So that's why they show. But um, yeah, man, we're beyond. We're